and gentlemen, welcome to the Jarek Bryan Show. My name is Jarek, and on today's show, we have Zerk from the Rec Gang. Zerk, how are you feeling, buddy? How are you? Hey, Jarek. Thanks for having me. Really love the show. Big fan. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to start this. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a fun show, and hopefully y'all are going to learn a bit, little bit about the Rec Gang today. Yeah, and you guys are, have such a great community, and you guys are hilarious, you know, in your Discord, and I just had to have you guys on, and um, just, you know, with the whole, like, kind of Red Gang vibe, before we get into that, kind of, like, give us kind of your, kind of, like, background, and how you got all the way to the Red Gang, like, your kind of, like, journey into Web3. Yeah, sure. Um, so, my background is actually, I'm a PhD in medicinal chemistry, and I work in big pharma. So I spent about 12 years in, in university and totally unrelated to Web3, right? Uh, but I do care about people a lot. And uh, the fact that I love the most about Web3 is kind of this freedom, this uh, power that it gives to the people of owning, you know, their money, owning their assets. I think that that is very pure. Um, and that's why I fell in love with the space. I think I entered the space about in uh, 2013, something like that. That was the earliest I was in. Uh, but really nothing much, just holding a little bit of Bitcoin and things like that. Uh, in terms of NFTs, that was way more recent for me. Uh, in 2020 is when I really got into it. I think uh, afterwards there was uh, the whole NBA Top Shot mania. I don't know if you're familiar with that project yeah. but uh very simple to understand and uh afterwards buying yeah. shit coins getting hacked um you know all these things can happen in crypto and it's very easy to get wrecked we want to prevent that by providing education and basically sharing a lot of alpha within our discord so that the mission is kind of simple prevent people from getting wrecked but i think it has very uh, you know, very big impact as well as longevity because there's always new scams and there are always new opportunities to, to get some profits, I guess, uh, within the crypto ecosystem. So um, for us, it's been kind of easy to stay true to our mission from our mint, which was uh, a year and a half ago to today, because the same mission remains true. We don't want you to get wrecked. So that was kind of like the whole purpose of the project. That's why these are called uh, the Wreck Gang. Initially, we were actually called the Wrecked Wolves because when you join the crypto ecosystem, you think you're the Wolf of Wall Street, uh, mm. but you're actually not. You're more like the Wrecked Wolf of Wall Street. Hundred <laughs> percent. Because when you join in, you think you're going to make all this money, but you really don't. Uh, so hopefully after you join the Wreck Gang community, you get a little less wrecked. Uh, our motto is Wreck Today, Stronger Tomorrow. So that's what we really focus on. And uh, yeah, that was kind of the big idea because um, we, we love to help people, like I said earlier. And um, we don't want them to get wrecked. We think it's super important as a mission. Yeah, you guys say that, right? You don't want people to get wrecked and, and everything like that. But it seems like you guys kind of like, kind of like own it, right? And you guys kind of like, in a nice nice way, you might make fun of it, but you guys kind of like wear it like almost like as a badge of honor. And you know, I think that's like so like, you know, cool that you guys kind of do that. And even in the artwork itself, like you can just kind of show that like, hey, we got wrecked, but we're still like kind of here. And you know, I just love the fact that you guys are doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, we we love self-deprecating humor. You know, <laughs> I think that that's kind of like on yeah our vision here. <laughs> you you totally yeah. got that. Um, you know, sometimes when you get wrecked, the only thing you can do is laugh about it, right? You mm -hmm. can learn about it and to move on. I mean, yes, you can cry, but hopefully, if you laugh about it, I think it kind of passes the pill a little easier. Yes, I got wrecked. Okay, it happened. You know. I won't get wrecked next time, haha, uh, and and move on. So yeah, humor is always a good remedy for for difficult situations. So yes, we do embrace that wrecked mantra. Uh, having you know the wreck name <laughs> in front of your project is not what usually people do. I mean, we we I believe we were the first. Uh, "Quote unquote wreck project," uh, and then afterwards there was wreck guy, and then wreck dogs came out. So, and it, now people kind of like it, but in the beginning, 
when you buy NFTs, they're usually like very powerful and, and very strong. And mm -hmm. but we don't want to portray that, right? Like we want to be self-deprecating. We want to be, you know, uh, managing the expectations very low. So <laughs> you come in, you're like, okay, I joined the rack gang. I got racked. It was, it was, you know, kind of faith. But if you do actually make money, it's like, oh, wow, this is surprising. I actually, you know, didn't do so bad. And they're not actually that wrecked. So uh, hopefully that that was, yeah, that, that's kind of stylistic decision for us to, uh, yeah, to be wrecked. Yeah, man, from uh, ashy to classy, right? And um, kind of with, uh, you know, the artwork, you know, it's fun. New, I, I love the, you know, the whole aspect of it. But before we kind of get into the artwork and everything like that, I noticed you guys are on you know, like so many different like chains. Like I, I'm looking here when I first got in, like, man, you're on base. Uh, you were on Luna, of course, before that happened, right? Polygon, Stargaze. Um, kind of like, what's your kind of like like feel on the whole kind of cross-chain initiative? Are you, uh, obviously you guys are a big fan though, but do you believe that's something that's going to be important for NFT projects in the future? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we pioneered a lot of things. Uh, so, so, you know, I guess Rekt is, is, Maybe that doesn't count. Maybe there was another project that was called Rec a year and a half ago. But but this multi-chain narrative, I think that one w we did pioneer because mm -hmm. in our initial roadmap, almost, you know, like even before Mint, this was uh, two years ago, we said we will be multi-chain. We said we will be minting on all these chains. And we said that multi-chain is the future. So for us, the chain does not matter. What matters is the art, the community, and the utility that you provide to your community. So all those three things can be done on any chain, right? It doesn't have to be like on ETH or Solana or Polygon for that fact. So it doesn't matter where you mint, as long as you provide good art, you have a good community, and you have the appropriate utility, you will make it as a NFT quote unquote IP. Um, so we've seen it with other projects, right? Like Utes migrated from Solana mm -hmm. to Polygon and the floor held pretty well for, for a good amount of time. I think it's still, do, you know, relatively decent to, uh, if you're looking at the whole NFT market. So really people didn't care that they migrated to Polygon that much. So it's not about the chain. It's about, you know, the nature of the value that you're providing um and that comes in the art community and utility so we always envisioned a multi-chain future that being said i want to add more to this because i think it's very important for people to understand that for us it's more than kind of yes this is true multi-chain is the future uh and you know art community utility are things that matter but for us there's a greater purpose to be multi-chain and um I mentioned earlier, our goal is to prevent people from getting wrecked. How do we do this? We provide education and alpha. How do you provide education and alpha is by being aware of what's happening everywhere, right? If we are only knowledgeable about Polygon, but then we're missing out on all these amazing opportunities on ETH or BASE or Bitcoin ordinals, right? Um, so, so having people and mints from all these different communities provides us with a very knowledgeable community uh, that is already kind of focused on sharing, right? We we kind of encourage them to share what they learn, share uh, you know opportunities on those chains, and always obviously share rugs on those chains to be careful. So you know by having a multi-chain community you can be a better, uh, you know, multi-chain education hub so people don't get wrecked. So our purpose, you know, in the greater scheme of things is for less people to get wrecked by knowing what's happening everywhere. So hope that answers the question. It, it does, right? And, you know, that's kind of like the uh, kind of like sidetracking here. That's kind of like the reason why I started this channel too. And I was going to kind of go uh, cross-chain as well. You know, I love Polygon. You know, Polygon's home. But also, too, I also want to explore other blockchains as well, just on the sheer fact that, you know, that we want to make connections. We want to build stuff together. You know, I don't believe in this kind of like crypto crypto uh, tribalism or anything like that. So it was very, very important for me, too. And plus, all these influencers were wrecking everybody uh, left and right. And so it was just like, no, man, I'm going to I'm going to whether I have like 10 viewers or 10 followers, I'm still going to put 
content out there. I'm going to try to cover each chain and prevent people to, you know, same thing as you guys, to not, to not get wrecked and try not to get scammed by some of these, you know, influencers that put those, like, dumb faces or they put, like, those uh, Shiba Inu to, like, $50 or Dogecoin to, like, $100 or things like that. So I think I think that's where, uh, that's why I kind of got drawn to you guys because I think we have that kind of the same goals in mind, you know? Yeah, and, and really, that, that's what you're saying, right? So you go talk to the Solana folk, you're going to learn something from them. And then maybe you share that with the Polygon folk and, and, and you know, vice versa. You share some things with the Solana folk from Polygon learnings. That elevates the whole Web3 ecosystem. That elevates everybody, right? If we work in silos and we, you know, don't see what's happening uh, <laughs> in our upper neighborhood, we're missing out. You know, this is not the way to build. We're probably just going to be doing copy pasting stuff and, and not learning from each other. So that I feel is very unfortunate to have, like you say, the word tribalism in the crypto mm -hmm. ecosystem. So I, I, yeah, kudos to you for, uh, you know, exploring all the ecosystems and, and getting uh, different people on your show. Oh, no, I appreciate you and, and thank you for that. But kind of going into the, the different cross chains, just so you can kind of remind the audience, like how many different chains are you on? Yeah, so I guess it can get a little confusing. We are technically on 11 different chains. <laughs> yeah, Damn. yeah, 11 it sounds like a lot, but a lot of those chains are, are more placeholders for, for Rec Gang NFTs. Um, I'll do a little super quick story but we did mint on terra luna that was mm. our og chain uh for the wrecked wolves before it got completely wrecked <laughs> and then we bridged the collection to uh yeah our, uh, the you know the irony of a collection called wreck gang minting on a chain that gets wrecked uh but afterwards we bridged the collection to ethereum um, and on Ethereum, we were like, man, we don't want the same thing to happen again. We want our NFTs to be cross-chain. What that means is that those NFTs that are on Ethereum are actually bridgeable to different chains whenever you want, however you want. You can bridge to, you know, Arbitrum or Polygon or Moonbeam or Phantom and then back to Ethereum if you want to be doing that. So it's kind of like a perk uh, for people, if something happens on Ethereum or the gas fees are super high and nobody wants to trade there anymore, well, then you can bridge it to another chain and then just trade there if you want to be doing that. Um, or there's a new metaverse on Polygon and you want your NFT to be interoperable in that metaverse on Polygon. So you can bridge your NFT from ETH to Polygon. That being said, most of the people keep their NFTs on ETH and Polygon. Those are kind of the main chains for the wrecked wolves. So... Even though we are technically on 11 different chains, I, I would say, you know, there's more like five, six chains that actually are, are more active than others. And the others are just like there, but but nobody really trades NFTs there. Uh, they're more like, again, like I said, placeholders and, and also, almost like a showcase of, of what's possible uh, in terms of tech. That, that is amazing. Yeah, I love that you guys are doing that. But, you know, I, I really, really... Uh, want to know about the artwork, right? So we're going to kind of start off with the Wreck Wolves, right? You kind of already mentioned that too as well. Uh, you guys are born on Terra, right? Um, how was kind of like that kind of whole experience on like Terra, like and as, as far as like one, that you guys like one had to experience that and then two, like not giving up and kind of like bridging off to somewhere else. Can you kind of explain kind of like that whole kind of like process of what happened on Terra with the Wreck Wolves? Yeah, sure. So we minted in um, yeah uh, March, I think of uh, yeah last last year. So yeah, a year and a half ago, I think, or a little more than mm -hmm. that. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, um, and uh, when we were on Terra, it was it was really good. I mean, honestly, projects were minting out. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you right now, we had a two hundred dollar mint, right? $200 mint. How much Matic is that? 400 Matic? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, You'd and, be stoned right now if you did that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and we sold out in less than a minute. Uh, yeah. And it, it was a 2.2K collection. Not, not a huge collection, but still. And there were mints there that were $200 and sold out 10K collections, right? So, you know, like people had lots of money. And 
our all time high floor was about $4,000 uh, per NFT. Uh, you know, I think the record of, of a rec wolf sale is something like 12 grand or something like that. So back in the day, money was flowing because obviously, you know, the whole <laughs> Luna ecosystem <laughs> was pumping like crazy and yeah. we were trading in Luna, right? So technically, you know, we say we had a $200 mint, but if you're looking today, it was more like a, you know, $0 mint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that being said, the NFT ecosystem was pretty fun. It was, you know, it was, it was good times. Uh, we were providing uh, education and research back in the day, which was an unfilled, you know, need on, on Terra for NFTs. We were doing like these analytics. Basically, we would just put floor prices and, you know, volumes daily. We put that in a spreadsheet and we posted that daily. That, that was like kind of one of our value props, as well as providing some reviews on projects and things like that. So it was good uh, until it wasn't. And then, you know, once the chain kind of de a lot of people lost a lot of money. Our treasury lost a lot of money. I think, uh, yeah, the founders ourselves lost a lot of money. So all that digital money that we had uh, that in unrealized gains definitely w was lost. So that's unfortunate. But um, for us, it was like, okay, well, now we are truly wrecked. So we want to take care of our community. Let's bridge as soon as possible to another chain. So I think some people, you know, they react differently in difficult situations, right? Some people, you know, they, they tend to like freeze or reflect and, and that's okay, right? Like you, you can't always have a cool level-headedness. For, for me, uh, also, I don't think it's like the right thing to do, but but I need to do something, right? Like I need to do something. Sometimes it's better to reflect on what happened. I, I don't need to do that. I need to move on. <laughs> so basically, we were the, the first collection to migrate because we're like, okay, this is collapsing. How can we bridge as quickly as possible? Let's get this going. We reached out to Layer Zero back in the day. I don't know if you're familiar with Layer yeah. Zero. We actually yep. had Brian the CEO of Layer Zero on an AMA with us to talk about, you know, cross-chain NFTs, which is really cool. So um, anyways, we, we bridged within a month. I think it was almost within a month to Ethereum. So we kind of turned that around super quickly uh, because we wanted to get a move on and we felt like giving people the hope to, you know, of a new chain, of a new future um, and stability, right? Like Ethereum was picked because it did have that stability, but plus that the cross chain tech was something interesting as well. So anyways, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely heartbreaking for us and, and in the pockets, but not only the money lost, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Terra was very focused on decentralized money, right? Mm -hmm. Which kind of, uh, I am I was very bullish on that concept. Again, I mentioned earlier, like freedom of ownership for me is super important. That was kind of what Terra was. It was, uh, okay, well, now this money doesn't belong to anybody but the blockchain. Because USDC is technically, you know, owned by Circle. Uh, so you're not really owning money. You are owning Bitcoin, which is great. But it would have been nice to have some sort of stable coin that, that the people owned. Uh, so that was the vision. I know it didn't pan out. It was, <laughs> but, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but not only the money, but that principle you know, being shot down was, was very heartbreaking for a lot of the lunatics is what we call the ex Luna community. So, um, we needed to do something and that the, the bridge was done very quickly. I think the community was very grateful for, you know, how, how quickly we turned that around and, and the community was super supportive. We had spaces every kind of single day, even twice a day, because a lot of people were in shock. Uh, and needed that mental health support. And, and really, I think a lot of people left the space as well uh, at the time, which is very unfortunate, but they were just, you know, like these JPEGs for them were, was nothing. They lost millions of dollars. Like it was like massive. So uh, yeah, that being said, we, we try to get a move on on quickly. And we always say when the 
going gets tough, the tough get going. And that's kind of like our philosophy that the tougher it is, the more it gives us an opportunity to rise to the challenge. And then that's what we did, uh, you know, on Terra Luna. So that's why, you know, bear market is like nothing for us. You know, people complaining there's low volumes, man, we went to like zero, literally zero. Like, you know, yeah. you, you see your wallet and then there's nothing. It is like your wallet got drained. So, and, and also I feel, you know, yeah. So, so for us, like we went through that trauma already. So for us, it's easier to handle like the, these bear market conditions, but also is a great proof of concept that, uh, you know, cross chain actually does work because we were on Terra and technically if we stayed on Terra classic, uh, NFTs would be worth nothing. Now you can sell and buy wrecked wolves today for like 380 Matic or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, they held some value. And, and that is very cool for our holders because they actually got to recoup some of those costs and they got their trippy wolves airdrop on Polygon for free afterwards. So again, they got to recoup some of those losses. Uh, and again, showcasing that uh, it doesn't matter what chain you're on, as long as you have the art utility and community, then you can be anywhere. Yeah. And you know, it was, you know, I've had uh, EJ on, right. I've had, um, Cal from Space Safe Societies, all these guys were, you know, from Terra Luna, right? I've talked to my buddy Tiz. Um, he was also on Terra Luna too as well. And I just, I don't think people really kind of understand how, you know, devastating that was, right? That whole kind of the ecosystem was thriving. You know, EJ was telling me that it was like, you know, builders were building on there. Like, you know, it was a, you know, thriving kind of community. And for it to all be gone within seconds, was just, you know, it just punches you right in the gut. And that kind of brings me to this question because I asked it to EJ and um, Cal too was, why didn't y'all quit? No, you guys could have quit. You know, yeah, I agree. EJ and Cal are, are, are great people, by the way. I love that you had them on the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to them. Uh, but, but, you know, for just like a small kind of sidebar, but they, they had not yet minted on Terra yet. So, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was good for them. Uh, they were almost there, but, uh, uh, and, and then it kind of happened. Um, so us minting there, we already had the responsibility to our holders, I felt, to, to kind of follow through with this. Um, yeah, I, you know, and for me, again, like I said, I need to be doing something. It, some people react differently to, to, to situations, to difficult situations. And for me, like I, I care too much about the vision of the project. I care too much about the community and it's not in my nature to stop, you know, and quit. Um, <laughs> so at that point it was like, okay, well, what's the next thing we can do? Let's move on. Let's try to make the best out of it, quote unquote. And hence the cross chain NFTs, which were an innovation. Uh, so we kind of tried to, to, to salvage as much as we can and, and do it that way. So, yeah. I, and also, you know, you, you got to understand um, for me, like, and, and the other founders of, of Rec Gang, uh, we are not, this is not our full time. I know like some people don't think this is uh, the way of doing NFTs, but I, 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 I like to put that up front. This is, and, EJ will tell that to you as well, right? Like EJ, this is, he has a company, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I have a full-time job as well. So for me, this is a hobby, a passion project. Um, I really love the vision of crypto. I love NFTs and, and, you know, I put my heart into it. That being said, it's not about the money for me. So, you know, what else, if it's not about the money at that point, it really doesn't, you know, matter if, you know, why would you quit? Like you have this project, you have this community, just move on, try to find a solution and let's continue building. If it was about the money and then you lost all the money, then you're like, okay, well, this isn't profitable anymore. I'm not going to pursue this, right? So depending on the why you started the NFT project in the first place, that, that kind of changes things a lot. So yeah, I, I hope, I don't know if that answers the question, but uh, it wasn't even a question, right? In my head, when that came up, I wasn't like, oh, we're going to quit. Like that didn't even come up. It was like, okay, what can we do now to, to migrate the project? No, yeah, you guys didn't quit. You guys could have quit. You guys could have quit at any point in time, but you didn't. And um, just hats off to you guys, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, same for for EJ and Cal. I mean, they had done their art. I think they could have quit afterwards and said, you know, forget mm -hmm. NFTs, but they decided to push through. So um, I'm, you know, very proud of them for continuing on. And the again, the Terra community. I know people think Coin was a a scam and all that, but they, they had some really good builders and, and some wonderful people. Uh, yep. It was very innovative for the time. Um, and unfortunately, you know, things happen. <laughs> so, so, but, but that doesn't change the fact that it had good people and those go, good people kind of push through and, and you see them as, as some of the leaders for the Polygon NFT ecosystem now. So that's great. And, and you know, with that, you know, what's funny, Zerk though, speaking of getting wrecked, right? My light, that lights this room fell right on my freaking camera like during the interview i don't know if you caught it and i was like man of course on a wrecked interview i'm gonna get wrecked. my camera and my lights gonna wreck me and uh so i had to scramble to fix it and uh everybody that sees me moving around i had to like mute, turn off my camera but fitting that i would have uh these kind of technical difficulties during with the uh wreck gang so Stuff that was yeah, kind of hilarious. You know what? Uh, we minted on Terra. The chain got totally wrecked. We didn't yep. ever mint on Juno. <laughs> that chain got wrecked. So wh wherever we go, everything gets wrecked. It's <laughs> <laughs> My light got wrecked. And, uh, that's funny. Yeah. But um, it, yeah. And, and, you know, that's great that you guys are like, you know, doing all this. And, you know, hats off to you guys. And, you know, speaking of Trippy Wolves, right? I kind of like explained like, one, the artwork is really, really good. Like, it, it is really something that caught my eye. And also, too, like kind of like kind of the history of Trippy Wolves. Like, what what was the kind of like um, like how did you guys like come up with that collection? Yes, yeah, so, sure. So you know, interesting fact: the same artist does everything for Wrecked Wolves. So all hmm. the artworks you see, including the pixelated chickens, are done by him. Uh, all the illustrations, everything is done by the same artist, which is pretty cool, right? Like that we kept the same, you know, uh, kudos been really incredible. And, and yeah, so uh, that being said, when we launched Rec Wolf, you can see that we really wanted to focus on the eyes, the expression, uh, kind of they all have like this personality. You just look at the, the, those eyes, like you look at the eyes of my PFP that I'm rocking right now, mm -hmm. and you can see like th this character looks like he's uneasy. He's wrecked, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Rhymes him. Like you just look at it. Um, I made that face when my camera fell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, you know, some people prefer something a little more colorful, right? Something a little more wild, more exciting, more psychedelic. And the vision here was, okay, well, you got wrecked. How do you handle, you know, being unwrecked or what's the solution? And one of the ways is, is taking the trip, right? So, so basically, you know, it's a play on words for for taking some hallucinogens or <laughs> mushrooms and you know just changing your state of mind basically from being a wreck state of mind to being a trippy state of mind um hence that's why we launched this collection the trippy wolves the artwork is way more colorful way more wild way more you know creative in terms of traits and all those things and that was exactly the point it was kind of like the counterpoint to the wrecked wolves and uh it, it's just kind of changing your state from wreck to trippy and the other thing that w why we wanted to put out this collection is as i mentioned earlier you know uh, the wrecked wolves on terra a lot of people lost a lot of money was very unfortunate we kind of wanted to give them something for free uh on on the new York chain that they were going to be on these trippy wolves so they were on polygon so it was a gift free free airdrop to to all the wrecked wolf holders that had bridged to to ethereum and you know they were very grateful for this because i think it provided the opportunity for some to, to sell off you know a, a trippy wolf and the floor is i don't know what it is right now but like 150 matic or something like that so still it's not a negligible amount so we wanted to reward our holders one and to create this trippy collection to kind of showcase a different art style and a different state of mind. So that was kind of the vision there. And it's all done by the same artist again. Yeah, and, and that's amazing, right? So that was a free airdrop, correct? Yeah, we were actually, I don't know if you're familiar with the marketplace One Planet, uh, yeah. but we were actually the, the first, you know, airdrop slash mint on polygon on one planet marketplace which is really cool uh they're like the first sale was was a trippy wolf so they helped us out carry this you know kind of a, a free airdrop so we're very grateful to them for 
uh, helping helping us out on the tech side there. And uh, yeah, it was uh, entirely free and it's Polygon native collection. It only existed on Polygon, never existed on any of our blockchain actually. So it was kind of like the big idea there was uh, uh, welcome to Polygon, get a trippy wolf and, you know, enjoy yourself <laughs> being trippy. Yeah, and you know, that's great because, like, I love projects that constantly give back to their holders, right? In a sense of, like, you know, this was a free airdrop, right? And these, when I was trying to, like, look for a trippy wolf, these these floors are pretty are pretty high. I think right now it's at 150, but I believe at a, a certain point in time, it was, like, two-something, um, high twos, you know, um, mid like you know mid one you know like matic and it was it was like i said it was a free airdrop they could have used it to like you know get into other projects taking some profits to you know pay some bills but you guys like gave them that option and i just love projects that do that are constantly you know giving back to the community and you know it just like i said i love when projects do that yeah and you know it was a tough call almost because uh our treasury was pretty shot right after the collapse everybody's mm -hmm. funds were pretty shot but I guess, yeah, if our treasury was shot, you know, pe people's wallets were even more shot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. At that point, it was like, let's just, you know, we, we always intended it to be a free drop, you know, and uh, um, we, we kind of kept our word, too. So it was uh, it was important for us to give back value to holders, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of want to go to the uh, next kind of collection because you have um, some others here, too. I want to talk to you about the Rec Bulls. Right. And that's on Juno. Kind of talking about the Rec Bulls. Like, what's their kind of role in the ecosystem? Yeah. So, uh, really, the, the idea of the Rec Bulls, we wanted to kind of have like a middle ground between uh, the very sober Wrecked Wolves, very clean lines, and the very psychedelic Trippy Wolves. So, we, we, we decided to do the Rec Bulls. And obviously, the Rec Bulls, you know, I don't need to. It, explain you why they were called wrecked bulls <laughs> because it was like peak bear market you know peak crypto bear you know once we had like the because right now we're like in the bear but it's been stable for a year right like the bitcoin price has been oscillating between what 20 and 30k for uh, a long know, time it feels yeah, like a long time now right but they minted when it was you know from 50 to, to the <laughs> to 20k so that 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 was a big ass drop that we had anyway so so uh the goal here was to have something in between for one but really we wanted to be on this chain called juno which is a cosmos chain mm -hmm. uh i know uh, maybe your audience is not too familiar with the with the cosmos but it has some really good tech on that chain and we want it to be on this network uh, because they have some DAO tooling that's very unique to them. Uh, so for us, it would, as Cosmos natives, for people that don't know this, but Terra is actually a Cosmos chain, we wanted to get back to the Cosmos because we had a lot of community members that were buying into our collections from Cosmos. Uh, they were buying Polygon and ETH NFTs and they were like, guys, well, you know, when will we be on Cosmos? And we we're like, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's go to the Cosmos. Uh, so we minted these rec bulls on the Juno network. Again, I think they sold out in about a few minutes uh back in the day and um it was it was it's good collection it was successful but uh, we had some issues with the marketplace there in terms of like tech and things like that but still they're traded you know and people enjoy them a lot and what they have that's very unique they have access to this tooling called dow dow it's it's very very special it doesn't always work, okay? But when it does, it's just so incredibly powerful. And uh, I think a lot of people enjoyed our event around this this tool called DowDow. And now we know we're hoping that we can enjoy this tool in the Cosmos again. But yeah, the Rec Bulls Cosmos Native Collection. Uh, again, to expand our knowledge about the Cosmos and kind of uh, have that community on board to Rec Gang share what they know about Cosmos. Uh, and really that was part of our multi-chain vision as well as having some art that's a little bit different uh, from the Wrecked Wolves and the Trippy Wolves there. So that was kind of the big idea about the, the, the Wrecked Bulls. So we, we really love that collection. Um, it's just the chain that they minted on, the Juno network. You know, I, I mentioned this earlier, right? Like, 
I think when we minted uh, on Juno, uh, Juno token price was three dollars. And let me check what the Juno token price is today. Uh, the Juno token price is twenty cents. So you know, uh, from free to, to, to and the all-time high for Juno, I think was something like uh, I don't remember what was it, uh, forty bucks. Yeah, jeez. Uh, right, another another wreck chain by us. <laughs> that being said, that being said, we minted for I believe it was forty-nine dollars or something like that. And uh, the floor on these, uh, you minted like an unrevealed NFT. And the floor on the unrevealed NFTs today is about 100 bucks, And the revealed NFTs is like, I think it's 55 or something like that. But all things considering with the bear market, you're above floor, right? And if you didn't reveal it, you're, you're at least 2x. So, you know, we sold out really quick and it's still holding, uh, even though the chain got totally demolished. So in terms of price action. Yeah, and um, it, it was it, it's funny because you say that because like yeah, it seems like everywhere you all go, it's just like it's it's I don't know. To me, it's it's funny though, but you guys own it, so yeah, that's uh, to me is hilarious. But um, I yeah, don't know. it's a little unfortunate. Next time we're gonna be asking people to pay us not to on their chain <laughs> because because you see the free airdrop that is okay. Polygon is doing okay. You know the chickens they were free, right? So mm -hmm. the chain is doing okay. But if we're asking for a paid mint then the, the chain gets wrecked so <laughs> well, well thank god i didn't ask you to to pay me for this interview or else like the camera probably would have exploded instead of just falling down so um it, it was it, it's 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 crazy though but uh, I, I, it was so i was in y'all's discord too as well is there, is there something called like muscle bulls or do you guys have that like muscle bull or was i don't know it's something like oh, well, that's aaron he's probably trolling you you know he, he's he's definitely <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, we have some friends. They they create a collection called the Muscle Mice. It's yeah, uh, a little bit of a meme collection, and yeah, they, they do. You know, they, it's 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 all a meme. <laughs> check them out. It, no, it's not a real collection. But uh, okay, because I was gonna say, I was like, what? And I was it was because like I had just got the uh, the Trippy Wolf, and they said, now get this one because uh, you lift weights too. And I'm like, okay, I went to go check it out, but and I was like, man, what is this? What is this on? It was just. Uh, it's fitting that they were trolling me, so I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they will troll a lot of people, so be careful of what you know. You kind of have to get used to their sense of humor uh, <laughs> to get the Red Gang community. But those are the three OG collections that we have that we consider OG: is the Wrecked Wolf, the Creepy Wolves, and the Wrecked Bulls. So, so those are it. Yeah, and you know, speaking of the Wrecked Chickens, right? So um, that was kind of like also that was was that also a free air? Well, speaking of which, well, free airdrop. Uh, Donnie from Brozos, I was supposed to get my chickens. I never got my chickens, so I have them on later today. I'm going to figure out why I didn't get my damn chickens. I don't know, man. You're supposed <laughs> to. Yeah, yeah. You, you ask Donnie or anybody. Oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to get them. You, you had to mint them on the mint day. I think you hold uh, uh, owls and, and all those other collections. They were all mm -hmm. whitelisted. So anybody that held anything on Polygon of value was whitelisted to get a, a wrecked chicken. Uh, as well as rec gang holders, you know, got rec chickens. And we did that on a few chains, right? We, we kind of uh, wanted to coordinate the biggest quote unquote multi chain mint. So we minted on three different chains at the same time. We had deployed contracts on Polygon, Stargaze, and Solana at the same time. Solana, you know, Magic Eat and Solana helped us out. And the reveal happened at the same time, which is so cool because they were all, you minted like an unrevealed chicken mm -hmm. and the reveal happened all at the same time on three separate chains. Obviously it's a free mint. I don't know what people expectations were. This is a 20 K collection. Uh, they're worth like, uh, I think four Matic or five Matic. Obviously they're not going to be worth that much, but uh, we do have utility for them. You know, they're kind of used as a, as a rec gang currency is what we like to say. So if you want to be gambling on NFL games, you put up chickens. If you want to have access to our alpha channel for one month, you, you pay a chicken and uh, a few little like utilities like that. We have a chicken racing game coming up. Um, again, you'll be putting up chickens with that. So, Basically, we want to provide them some sort of uh, currency utility, people trading chickens. We think it's funny, right? It's kind of like a, <laughs> a chicken is a pretty wrecked animal. And we wanted mm -hmm. to do a different art style as well because all our art, it was 2D before, you know, with not pixel. 
uh, and and our artists wanted to, to give it a shot for pixel art, and and I think they turned out really well art wise as well. I think they they look cool for a free mint for a pixel art for those that enjoy pixel art. Yeah, so I was kind of like wondering like what their kind of role was in the whole ecosystem, but you answered that question, so I think that's cool. That's fun. You know, what I mean, I, I like that, and I don't know what people are expecting in this kind of bear market, but I, I like the fact that y'all did that and, and everything. But with all these NFTs, right? that you guys have like the wreck wolves the bulls the trippy wolves chickens and all those things like what are some of like the, you know the perks that you have for holding each and every single one of these nfts or just have or holding just one yeah well we we are big on holding just one actually uh one of the og collections you know you mm -hmm. get a lot of perks by holding just one we don't have many whale rolls in our in our discord because we're kind of a little bit anti-whale. <laughs> we, we, we prefer unique ownership, right? Like we want mm -hmm. as many owners to be within the rec gang as possible. Uh, so our biggest owners, I, I don't even think they hold that many. <laughs> um, so that, that, you know, obviously it doesn't, the price action isn't as exponential. Um, so we never run like sweeping contests or things like that. Again, because that centralizes ownership. It's all like in the mantra of the rec gang. We want to be decentralized and so on and so forth. So one OG gets you access to, I guess for people, what brings the most value is definitely the, the alpha channel. Um, that is what we're most famous for. I think our alpha is one of the best in the markets. I pay for alpha group of $75 a month, US dollars a month. And it offers way less quality than, than what we offer, which is one, you know, trippy or bull or, or wolf that you can resell afterwards, right? This is a $75 sunken cost. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 you know, in terms of alpha, just, I, I, you know, and I don't even have to go far. I can go yesterday. We were very heavy on those Pokemon cards. I don't know if you missed that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so Pokemon had launched some cards on Courtyard.io, five dollar mint. Uh, a lot of our holders hit. Floor right now is one hundred thirty five dollars. So, Damn. You know, yeah, yeah. So we we have like that 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 type of win all the time. You know, all the time in the rec gang. Um, we pride on it. <laughs> so so our alpha calls are usually very very good. Um, and that's how people make money. That's why we have this community that is multi-chain is because we can then, you know, find these little interesting mints on these weird chains. Injective has a free mint or Stargaze has this cheap mint. Or there's these Polygon Pokemon cards, you know, on Polygon, don't miss out. So people always, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. So I would say that's kind of like the biggest utility and very unique to us that you cannot reproduce because you need that community and you need those alpha caller people to be in, in that community to, to kind of take advantage of that. We also have, you know, more classic things like staking and uh, uh, you, you earn points and, you know, you get the win prizes. We also have uh, a metaverse integration for the Wrecked Wolf so you can play in the metaverse with our character. Uh, soon you'll be able to do that in Arcadia as well, which is a 3D metaverse. So all those kind of other extra perks we have those but like i said i think the biggest one is is definitely the alpha um and and obviously the community is really cool to vibe with if you're you know <laughs> they're, they're hilarious no they're yeah. hilarious they even trolled me trolled me into asking you a question so that's hilarious yeah yeah they troll everybody so you know if you're into the mood to be entertained um check out discord they'll, they'll probably find something funny to talk about so yeah. you know um i think that those are kind of the, the the big perks but we have the other standard ones staking merch as well uh i kind of tend to forget all the other little things that we do but that people enjoy but i think you have to go for what's what differentiates you and for us it's the alpha hub yeah yeah again bravo guys for trolling me i i think that was that was brilliant right now i'm kicking myself uh, for falling for it but you know um you know with the kind of alpha caller you know thing, a lot of groups kind of like offer that right what kind of sets yours like you know a, sets yours above some of the other ones out there like what kind of makes yours kind of unique do you have like certain people um that are just kind of like these um weird kind of sixth sense on just these different products like what kind of sets yours apart from uh, other alpha call groups 
Yeah, honestly, other awful groups, no offense, they're, they're garbage. Like, I go in those groups. Like, I'm in 200 discords, right? Like, every time mm-hmm. I have to leave one to join a new one because I'm in so many. And I'm like, well, this is crap for the most part. It's a lot of crap, man. Like, I would not mint most of the things. Like, most of the time, they're shills. They're not mm-hmm. alpha they're shills, right? Um, and that, that infuriates me because people want to be pumping their bags. So for us, I think one is we have a history for it, right? Like we've been doing this for a year, almost two years now, um, of, of, you know, this is kind of our value prop. It's, it's all these alpha calls Two, uh, so we were kind of bred into it, built from the ground up, uh, our community kind of looking for these opportunities. Two, um, we are a multi-chain group. So, you know, we have people that are in Cosmos, Ordinals, Star, you know, all these different chains, Solana, whatever, uh, Polygon, EVM, Base. Uh, so you get like a rich variety of different alpha calls because sometimes the best play is just not to do anything, right? Because there's nothing good happening on Polygon that week. It, it's possible, right? Like, just don't do anything. But that doesn't mean that, you know, if you go on base and you mint, I don't know, we were big into friend tech, whatever. But now it's post tech, by the way, on arbitrary. Oh. Yeah, so we're big into that too. Uh, but it's going down now. Anyways, that being said, there's always like some opportunity on some other chain uh, to be taken advantage of. And, and because we are a multi-chain community, I think that's what sets us apart a lot. And two, I mean, we have a proven uh, yeah so one i guess we we kind of did this from the ground up two we're a multi-chain community and three we have a proven track record i mean we post these all the time in our wins channels uh people are always winning for you know within the rec gang so it's not like we're tooting our own horn if this was a failure people wouldn't be following the alpha calls and honestly that that's the way that i make money is you know we we do all these free mints and free shit uh, I do have a full time, but it's nice to make a little extra on the side, and most of the time it's just the alpha call. So you know. <laughs> and you know, and, and I say that because like you, your alpha call group is pretty legendary because it's 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 reached. I'm not saying I'm anybody important, but like you know, I've heard of it, right? I'm not really kind of into alpha calls or anything like that. So it's just like um, just kind of hearing about it. I'm like, okay, these guys must be something if everybody is talking about the alpha call group and everybody is telling me like, at least get a. Um, a wreck chicken or a wreck bull or something uh, to get into this group, and I ended up getting a trippy wolf. And um, I haven't really explored that 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 just yet because I've been you know working on this channel, but I definitely will because I want some wins. Because uh, I'm not gonna lie, man, I'm down bad now. I'm down. Uh, I'm yeah. down really. <laughs> I think we all are. I think we all are uh, yeah, not, not up. It, you know, and and alpha calling in the bear market is, is a lot more difficult than alpha calling in the bull when. You know, you throw a dart on <laughs> any of the tokens and it's going to two or three X. Here, you really got to be super picky uh, because mm-hmm. everybody's very, very, very good at, at exiting quickly. <laughs> yeah, so bad. I was about to change this show's name to the uh, Down Bad Show, but I uh, went ahead and went with the Jared Bryan Show. Um, you know, as far as kind of like, you know, the community and you guys have a wonderful community, even though they trolled me here today and they got me. Um, kind of explain on like, you know, how to like to kind of like build kind of like a successful community for like all these other projects that are maybe getting ready to start out or projects that are probably watching this and like, man, I just can't really, you know, cultivate a really good community. Like how did you guys build such a passionate, you know, hilarious and trolling community? Can you kind of like, kind of give us a little take on that? Yeah. I mean, again, I think, uh, it, the, the, you know, the unique thing that happened to us or unique story is that we got wrecked on Terra for real, right? Like we minted there and we got wrecked there. So moving on from that situation, which was very, very difficult, kind of galvanizes the community and creates kind of these conditions where community never takes anything seriously anymore because they, they went through so much hardship that at this point any Twitter drama, anything that happens is just a joke, right? Because in the, you know, <laughs> all these fake dramas that you see on Twitter, it's, you know, nobody cares. It doesn't matter. Uh, nobody got hurt, you know. But mm-hmm. there on Terra, like, people really got hurt, really lost money. Some people killed themselves, you know, like, God bless. Oh, yeah. Very unfortunate. But, but there, you know, people got so hurt that now once they grew from it, uh it's just a different type of mindset that we have 
and came again from the ground up. I, I don't think there's like a, a formula to, to emulate this community uh, because our experiences were so unique, um, so difficult, you know, but, but at the same time, I guess in the, in the bigger sense of the scale, it, we, we grew from it and now we're stronger from it. Yeah, it, it, I know like there's not really a formula, but you guys like put it like as a very, uh, you guys put it on the forefront of your kind of um, project that I've noticed that you guys really do care about your community, especially with like the airdrops, you know, the alpha call groups and everything like that. So it was just was very interesting, like how some projects that are struggling now don't really have that strong community, but then they kind of wonder, they don't really offer their community kind of anything. So just kind of hats off to you guys. And um, I kind of want to kind of go more into the staking. You know, I noticed you have this uh, Twitter PFP. Um, you get kind of rewards for having a PFP. Is, is that correct? I, we call it PFP staking. Uh, mm -hmm. I think other projects call it something else. Um, cool thing about this is it's cross chain. So basically, you know, whatever chain your NFT is on, uh, you know, the bulls from Juno work, the wolves from Ethereum work, the chickens from Solana work. Uh, so, yeah, basically, you just switch your PFP to a wrecked gang PFP. And uh, we have um, an API that checks if you're rocking a wrecked gang PFP. And if you do, well, then you earn these points that afterwards you can spend on, on different prizes that we offer. So I guess in terms of staking, it's kind of simple. You just change your Twitter PFP to a red gang NFT and uh, yeah, you, you get to earn points. Um, I think the only innovation there is that it is cross-chain compatible. So that's pretty cool. But then again, off. Obviously, it is cross-chain compatible because it bypasses all the chains, right? Like it checks Twitter; it doesn't check the chain that much. Uh, so, and, and the way it works, it's it, it's pretty uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, we like it, uh, but but you know, I'm not like the biggest fan of staking utilities. Me too. Like, a lot of people have it, and we have it as well. But but I never think it's like a huge differentiator for a project to have it. Yeah, me too. It's kind of like. Um... I don't know, man. It's just as maybe as I've matured through this whole ecosystem and this whole market and this whole kind of like NFT thing. It's just, yeah, man, it's just not really, not really something I look for in a project like kind of like how I used to. I look for other things um, yeah. like it's yeah, just, some of the stuff that you're doing too as well. Yeah, to, to me, it's just it's not super innovative anymore, right? Like yeah. it's a little boring, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but but still, I know people like it, so we have it. So you can either change, you know, we have the staking for the PFP and also staking for holding, right? Like if you hold multiple of our NFTs, you get more points than you can spend the points. Uh, but but again, like I'm saying, we've seen staking them before three years ago, and it was it was cool then, and now it's just like, well, you know, show me something different. It's like rollerblading. Remember when rollerblading was, you know, cool, and then everybody said it was not. I don't know, man. I I, I like uh, I still I still do it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's, uh, I don't know. If it's <laughs> look cool though <laughs> I, you know i'm from canada right so we, we do a lot of ice skating here so oh, okay it was kind of the off season of of, of uh, ice skating for hockey <laughs> yeah but even then when even when people would say like hey let's go blading it just sounded i don't know it's very crazy uh, that, that sounds awkward <laughs> yeah it sounds like hey bro you want to go blade and i was like oh yeah. not really man i'm too big to actually because i'm gonna take like especially now uh, you know, as I've gotten older and like, you know, my big ass body, if I even fall once, man, I'm paralyzed. Like, if I take one bad fall, that's it for me. Like one normal fall for you is like just tragic for my fragile body. So there's just, there's just no way I can go blading or, or blading again or whatever it's called now. But, uh, yeah, man, it's just, um, yeah, I like the fact that I love what you guys are doing, but also too, you, you, I, you kind of like, I saw this on your website. I thought it was really cool. Uh, your comic book. Can you kind of go more into that? Oh, it's not, you know, it's, we call it a, it's not a comic book. It's, it's more of like a comic, uh, that, that, you know, our artist, again, the same artist Kudo mm -hmm. has put out, which is super cool. Um, and he created kind of like this, this comic strip for the, uh, introduction of trippy wolves, as well as the wreck bulls, kind of the showcasing of how they fit into the wreck gang lore. And I think people love, you know, a little story a little lore around the project not too complicated but uh just to kind of tie in all the different characters from the rec gang universe and and yeah so you know how does a chicken meet a 
bull meet a wolf, right? And then, <laughs> or a trippy. So if you go through our comic book, which is really well illustrated, you'll understand, you know, why all these characters exist and how do they exist. So yeah, I think it's cool in terms of art and uh, storytelling. I think that, that that's nice, but it's not something that, you know, we're going to be launching a comic book or anything like that because we know for a fact that, you know, we're not uh, comic book writers or <laughs> illustrators. We do it for the fun because it's a great medium um and it's more for the community than anything else that's cool it kind of brings that lore and it kind of connects all the uh, different pfps so i like that and um you know i definitely you know want to say that um where you guys you guys are doing all these things you guys have all these things accomplished right you know is there kind of like what do you guys hope to accomplish by the end of this year like in a perfect world Oh, sorry, man. I kind of had a connection issue there. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. See, the camera, then the connection issue. Yeah. Uh, man, it, it's, it's been fun. Yeah. So um, I, I heard perfect world at the end. So oh, I think like, in a per like, like, is there anything you guys are hoping to accomplish by the end of this year or you know, in a perfect world, right? Like, you know, let's just say like the aliens don't come out or whatever that, you know, whatever the case may be, like um, anything that you guys want to accomplish by the end of the year? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, we we do want to be launching the this wreck chicken racing game. We're hoping that you know the community is going to be vibing with it. Um, but really, I think the greater mission for us is just improving on our alpha calls, our alpha channel, bringing the educational aspect to Web three to the NFT community. That that's always an uphill battle. Like you know, you you're part of. Uh, kind of the solution right in terms of teaching people what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing but sometimes it's difficult right like somebody puts on a face and says that the next a thousand x people want to click on that instead of something that's mm -hmm. you know, more down to earth and and more reasonable so i think you know our mission is going to be never ending of trying to educate people manage their expectations uh uh you know for this space and and really that that's our, our whole goal is to prevent people from getting wrecked. So our, our mission is definitely just continuing that and then building as much as possible uh, in that vision. Um, in terms of like these smaller, cooler perks, obviously the, the chicken racing, I think people are going to like that. We have Trippy Swap 2.0 coming up, um, which is a way of, you know, a new way of kind of re-rolling the NFT that you have. I think it's a interesting concept that we had launched. We have a migration of the bulls from Juno to Stargaze because the Juno chain is not working that well anymore. <laughs> we got to migrate the collection, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, we got what we call El Torero event, which is basically gamified DAO staking um, and uh, uh, some new merch that's coming up. So, you know, Ooh. we have like all these things that are building in the background, but I think it's super important for us to keep true to the mission. That that to me is the most critical and important thing, and I don't think people can neglect how important that is um, and our focus around that. Man, that's great. And, you know, Zerk, I appreciate you coming on my show today, and uh, I really do. I really guys had to have you guys on with all the stuff you're doing, but before you go, right, um, is there anything you want to say or any community members you want to shout out or any team members you want to shout out before you leave? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, we didn't even talk about this because there, there's a lot of layers to this project, I guess, because the mm -hmm. older project, the more things that are, that are happening mm -hmm. on it. But we are a DAO-led project. So, you know, uh, the people that are in the position of leadership right now are all elected or for the most part elected by the community. So it's a, it's a DAO led project. Uh, we have different leads for different, you know, clans. That's what we call them. Some people are in charge of, you know, ship posting or, or memes. Other people are in charge of uh, leading collabs. Other people are in charge of alpha calling. So uh, all these people got elected by a rec gang community. And uh, we kind of love that decentralized angle again of this project. So I do want to shout out the, the OG founders, the Bessa, uh, Kudo, the, our artists, and Alden All or, or, or Dev. Uh, those are kind of the OGs. But, but right now, I mean, we have the council, which is uh, Xulian, um, PBR, Merlios. And we had Ghost that was there for a very, very long time that was uh, contributing a lot to the council um, for the, you know, people that take care of the memes we have colbert right now as well as aaron uh 
I'll give a shout out to Jesse, who's always an incredible member that helped us out. In terms of collabs, we have uh, Winnie and Fihu. In terms of alpha calling, we have um, uh, Jummy. And we have as well Uzi, who's a new alpha caller, really good. So, you know, that the team is actually pretty big if you consider all those those DAO leads and the Liquid Spirit, who's our mod. And then I hope I'm not forgetting people, you know, community members that show up every day. Obviously, we have, you know, Taco, who's like one of our <laughs> biggest advocates and we love him. So and, and I hope I'm probably forgetting some people. So I hope, you know, if you're listening to the recording and if I forgot you, I'm sorry about it. Uh, but I appreciate all the Rec Gang community for, for helping us. And, uh, you know, I think uh, without the community, uh, th there is no Rec Gang DAO. There is no project. So that that's kind of, uh, <laughs> they're the backbone of all this. Yeah. And uh, also, but before you go to, you guys have a lot of like, uh, you guys have a couple of spaces, right? That you guys host, that the community hosts, right? Yeah, we host, uh, we have our weekly space every Sunday at uh, 12, um, no, it's around 1 p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. I guess 12 Central Time, <laughs> um, and uh, that's on Sundays. It's just kind of like a weekly AMA of what's happening within Rec Gang, but we also have a new one called uh, Rec Dads. Uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. dads just talking we kind of have to find a direction for that space because we don't really know what we're doing, but it's funny because it's just dads getting together. Uh, that's on Tuesdays at uh, 4 p.m. UTC, 12 p.m. Eastern again. Uh, we used to have a Spanish spaces, which was pretty popular. I hope Ghost restarts that. It was just like a spaces in Spanish about Web3. And, and finally, I think Ghost is on the One Planet space, uh, kind of sharing his insights from time to time. So yeah, we do we do enjoy the Spaces platform as well to kind of, you know, learn about other people's projects. You know, we used to do that a lot, by the way. And, and that reminds me that we don't do that as often anymore. Like, ha we used to do a lot of AMAs with projects. We had, you know, Mr. Mint before he minted. We had, you know... Uh, who else did we have? Like pretty much everybody. Uh, we had the Plutos. We had the, I don't remember if we had Drill, but uh, we had Rec Dogs. So all these projects before they minted, we used to do AMAs with them to kind of uh, explain what they're doing. Because again, the education angle is super important. But nowadays, everybody does that on their own. So the need is not there anymore. Back in the days, it wasn't done. Now, all these new projects hang like on spaces twenty four seven. So everybody yeah. knows about them. <laughs> oh, and you know, Zerk, that's great. You know, I'll pin down all y'all stuff down at the uh, bottom of the video. Yeah, I appreciate you, Zerk, and you know, thank you for coming on my show. No, thanks, Jarek. Thank, thank you so much for for inviting me over. And uh, yeah, keep on doing what you're doing. I think it's super valuable to the community. I appreciate all the effort you put in, and. Uh, yeah, thanks again for having us. Uh, please, gang, don't get wrecked. <laughs> thanks again. And guys, if you like content like this, please like, comment, share, subscribe, download. Follow me on X and also follow the Wreck Gang on X too. Jump into their Discord. Get yourself a Trippy Wolf. And uh, I will see you guys around on the next one. Take care.